So today I, I'll be presenting, um, and I'm presenting on uh, using Logstream to uh, to get data from your from your 3D printer. So 3D printers and Logstream. So uh, w the first thing that I when I was coming up with this is is they're probably going to wonder why, just in general, why why are you doing this? Well, uh, 3D printers are awesome. Uh, Logstream is awesome. So adding them together, I mean, it's got to be it's got to be good, right? <laughs> so I, I decided to 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 ingest data from uh, my 3D printer, um, and I actually use Octoprint, uh, which is a, a 3D print uh, server that has a really nice UI. Uh, that, this is a screenshot right here where you can upload G code remotely and, and run it, and you can also control your 3D printer and kind of see. Um, you know, when it's running. And I, I it actually has a very nice uh, API, right? So uh, the API allows you to get, I mean, do a lot of things with Octoprint. You can not only just retrieve information from it, from like info on jobs, um, the printer state plugins, that, um, but you could also, you know, actually go do things like issue job command or, um, you know, log someone in or so there, there's a lot of it's a it's really open nice rest api that has great documentation so uh using I, i'm kind of curious how this will carry over i haven't looked at any other print servers out there um you know maybe even some enterprise grade versions i'm curious how i i try to do a little bit of research on that and their apis aren't as uh, openly documented as, as octoprints but i'm sure that there's something similar out there <clears throat> for those uh, but when, so what, what, what did I do with this data? I was going to route it through Logstream and I decided, you know, I, I worked at Splunk. I was thinking, okay, I could send it to Splunk, but no, that's boring. I actually, I want to send it somewhere new and somewhere different. Um, so I chose OpenSearch. Uh, and so for those who don't know what OpenSearch is, it's, it is, um, it is elastic search on the back end um, and it's their, it's the new open source um, spinoff of basically Elastic, uh, and it works well with our Elastic destination. So you can literally just use our Elastic destination. Uh, there's a couple of, of little weird things that you have to 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 do in that, uh, or maybe just one, um, but uh, it works with with uh, that destination in Logstream. Um, and so then in Logstream, there's a couple of things that I ended up doing to get the data out of Octoprint. Uh, I did a REST collector to, to get the printer state. I used a file system collector uh, to get the Octoprint log. And then there's a couple of things. I had to do an event breaker for the log. Of course, do some pipelines to get that data ready for open search. Um, and then uh, the elastic destination, obviously. So. I think that's all the slides I created. I figured I would just go ahead and show you kind of what I did. So let me stop sharing this screen. While I'm doing that, any does who has a 3D printer uh, here? Curious. Not me. I don't. It's cool, but I I have one. Do you use what do you use uh, as your print server? Or do you? Uh, do you use Octoprint? Uh, I'm not using that at the moment. Uh, okay. I may actually look into it. Yeah. At least if we can instrument it with Logstream. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you. It's pretty easy. So uh, let me share my screen on that one. Anyone else? I had to order some stuff made on Etsy because I don't have a printer. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm a little jealous of everybody who has one. I have a brand new one, uh, the the Prusa, Prusa, or I'm probably saying it wrong, Prusa uh, uh, printer is like one of the top rated ones. I actually uh, decided to get a to get that, and so it's it's on its way. Um, so I have an I I previously had one with with a friend, right? That we sort of shared, and he he actually owned it, but I was able to you know use. But now I'm I'm getting my own, right? <laughs> So that'll be fun. We'll be printing all sorts of stuff. Is it like uh, 400 bucks. Is that the one? It's actually, this one was a, a thousand, but it was fully, so you can get the kit 
um, and build it yourself for, I think like 700 something. Um, but the pre-built printer, I'll send you, I'll send a link. Um, okay. like the team is it the but, Prusa i3? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I see it here. Yeah. That one my friend has as well and, and he loves it. And so I, I was doing research. That one came up definitely as one of the top rated ones and, and he loved it. And so I, that's decided to just go ahead and get it. But, uh, so, uh, to use, uh, so using Octoprint here, this is the, the web interface, right. For, for Octoprint, um, here you can upload your G code here and, I have a the printer running right now. It's a, a actually a virtual printer, um, but I can go ahead and uh, I have this. So I don't, let's see if my screen, you can see. So this little 3D printed skull here, this is a, um, a Mayan death whistle. If you've ever heard of that, um, it's so it, it has a little hole and there like little holes on the back. If you, I would just Google it. I'm not going to blow it because it sounds like a, literally like a high pitched scream. Um, so apparently <laughs> it's a weird thing that the print, I had my friend print this thing, but that's actually what I have uploaded in here. Um, so I'm going to kick this job off just so I can see some data flowing through. Um, but the, in the, this interface, it's really easy, right. To, to do go and, and grab the API key here. Um, and really just bring that in, um, use that in the collector in Logstream, right? So this is my Logstream instance. Um, if I go over to the REST collectors, I have my Octoprint state collector. Everything, to make this easier on myself, I do have Logstream, Open Search, <laughs> and the print server right now um, I'm running on the same server. Um, although I did have I do have open search running in Docker. So it made it a little, little interesting. Uh, but one thing with this print server is it's installed using a, a, a Python virtual environment. Um, and you also had, I also had to install or, or uh, HA proxy in order to get this REST API piece to work. So that was uh, a few hours of troubleshooting yesterday when I forgot that you needed to, to get the proxy going in order to get this to work. But um, Really, other than that, it's just putting in the X uh, API key in the header. I um, mean, that's just what I got from, from Octoprint. Um, but if we run this, this is, oh, going back to this, this, um, this URL right here is just, I mean, straight from Octoprint's API. So they, I mean, Whenever I'm doing a REST API call, I always just go to the REST API docs. And, and this one, fortunately, was a very good looking doc. And it was very clear on what I needed to do to, to get stuff from here and, and authenticate, right? So um, there was very clear, okay, you could do an X API key in the header or use a bearer token. Um, and so that was very nice. Um, and then I'm just getting the, the state information. Uh, so if I go ahead and run it, we can see, I'll just do a preview. Uh, we can see the state of the printer right now, right? So it's not nothing, um, you know, too flashy in here, but it's it gives you things like, uh, is it running? Uh, what is the, the temperature of the bed? What is the temperature of the tool? Um, and some other information in here. So. I took this, you don't, from, from here, I actually scheduled this on a cron schedule so that it uh, runs every minute. Um, and so it is constantly sending data uh, through the, the, the pipe here. And you can see, yeah, so it's, it's doing, you know, I, so I've kind of, it's pretty nice setting that up on a schedule. Now it's, it, I don't really have to worry about it. Right. So it's just going and, and sending that every, every minute to, um, through the routes into open search <clears throat> but uh let's take a look at the routes so here is here are the routes um uh, so for uh, this collector I, I made it a little bit easier here and on the collector i added in a piece of metadata uh just to to easily filter the state and with this this pipeline, I, I had to get this printer state data ready for 
open open search, right? So that's elastic. Um, open search doesn't like fields that begin with underscore. Uh, and so I literally just took it out and replaced it with, with JSON, right? So now I'm just sending the extracted fields and I got rid of raw. Let's see, I mean, it, in the eval as well. Um, so when you're sending data to Elastic, it uses the underscore underscore index field to set the index. So, and that's the first thing I do, I send it to Octoprint state. Um, and we can see in the internal fields, we have that. And then on the part, I just parsed it and extracted the fields. It was already a JSON object, but I'd wanted to get it out of raw. And then I removed raw, right? So pretty simple pipeline. Uh, set up the destination for Elastic. This is a uh, open search. Uh, it's the last behind the scenes. So it just works great with the, I'm sending to like the bulk API. And with this index here, it doesn't really matter, right? Because we are overriding it within the, the, uh, the pipelines with the underscore underscore index field. Uh, this is uh, this is what so this is a little bit of my limited experience with with Elastic. But looking at the documentation for uh, Open Search, this is the type that they expect underscore doc. So, um, and then one last thing here with this Elastic configuration that that was tripping me up was this Elastic version will be set to auto by default. Um, and open search, or I, I don't know if it's the earlier version of Elastic or if it's open search, but they don't support that automatic checking a version. Um, so you have to manually set the version to 7.x here or whatever version you're using. Um, so with that, I was able to just send it in uh, to open search. Open search is, you know, once you, if you send it, you know, already extracted data with a with a um, you know an index. It's it's easy to create a new index here. Ooh. Let's see index pattern here. Uh, so when you have data coming in, you can just ooh, like search for it. So you can see I have an index pattern for OctoPrint. It automatically had all these fields extracted, right? Because I sent them as extracted fields from Logstream. And so now when I when I do or go to discover, um, I, I add my data, uh, you know, brought in. Now I can use Elastic's DQL, I guess, to search through my data here uh, if I wanted to. I actually did build a little bit of a dashboard here um, to look at the like tool temperatures. And so you can actually see this because uh, I kicked off that job in, in the beginning. Um, this is starting to, to heat up here on the temps, as well as I did some like overtime, right? <clears throat> and we can see that it's actually running. So nothing too crazy, just wanted to, to visualize that within, within uh, open search. I did uh, also get the uh the logs right so if we go to octoprint again and look at the logging there's several different logs here that we can get um octoprint log being the one of the most important for debugging what's going on with Oct octoprint uh so i will i wanted to get that in as well um and i just decided to because everything's on the same server here uh to use a file system collector <laughs> and so i i used our file system collector here for Octoprint. And it's just located in the, uh, you know, dot Octo, the hidden Octoprint uh, folder here in logs. I haven't tried this yet. I, I figure, I, I guess, you know, we could, I could probably set this up on a schedule, put it to destructive and actually have this as like a makeshift, um, you know, uh, source that, that that doesn't have to be you know pretty manual with me setting these off although i haven't played around with that um, with the file system but i just um i just will run this um if i need to get those logs oops into um into log stream or into open search and if i oops, get all around 
I did have to create a event breaker for this one, but it's a pretty simple one. It's just take a look. Oh. It just breaks on the timestamp, right? So pretty simple. And once I run that one, um, I was I'm able to just I on this I just had it bring in to discover I didn't bring any um, you know any different uh, I didn't run it that time let's make the launch thought I did this earlier. Check that one. Let's go back. Anyway, so once I run this, we can get the data into from there. It'll probably see it go on in 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 this. There we go. That's fun to watch. <clears throat> And I mean, that's pretty much pretty much it so far. So I that's kind of where where I got to. Um, I, I'm kind of interested in in maybe having once I, I set up, I'll probably will have a different print server once I get this 3D printer set up going. So uh, and I'm probably thinking of some different ways of, of getting that maybe not using a file system collector, or maybe some sort of agent. Um, but the API obviously is is definitely something that's easy to 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 get into and um see things like the state so yeah any so i guess that's pretty much what i got to show today i don't know if was there any questions or thoughts <laughs> well thoughts is pretty cool i mean it, is there any other way it almost sounds like there's is there's no other way to really monitor print jobs um not effectively, right? So collecting, it seems like that's kind of the hardest point and you've got a, an answer to it, right? So it seems pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, um, you know, I was also thinking with all the plugins, I, I, I haven't played around with this yet, but just troubleshooting plugins and things like that as well. I, I haven't dove into it because I haven't had any any issues with with uh, my setup that needed that yet. But anyway. Hey.